Graffiti magazines. Mm. Now I've had, I've heard people have, you know, different takes on graph mags. Some people love them. Some people think they're whack. What's your take on graffiti magazines? You know, books, magazines, videos, they all sort of fall into the same bracket of they you can sort of be politicised in that. Um, they're not always telling the truth, to be honest, you know. Um, I've seen magazines and stuff, you know, with certain writers featured in them time and time again and that, and they're great pieces and all that sort of stuff, you know, and you think, oh, these must be great guys or something or other, you know, and you go overseas and you go, oh, you know, how do I meet this guy and this guy that I've always seen in his magazines? And everyone just turns around and goes, yeah, don't worry about them, Mal, you dickheads. No one hangs out with them. But they happen to know the guy that was putting the magazine together and that, you know. So they're going to get their artwork featured in there. So, you know, the, the, the truth, so to speak, can be a little bit misconstrued. Mm. Um, I've always been, I've always, I've always been in the train of thought that just do what you're going to do anyway and be sort of real about it. If people choose to take photographs of it and you get patted on the on the back, so to speak, and those images ended up making into a magazine or anything, any other sort of publication, and that, then great. You know, you've obviously done your job well. It's it's about other people. It's up to other people to, to promote yourself. You shouldn't be promoting yourself yourself. And a lot of people do promote themselves themselves. They chase magazines and they want to get sort of exposés in there and that. It's all about them and all this sort of crap and. Everyone pats him on the back online and all that sort of stuff. And it was never really intended to be like that so much, I don't think, you know. I think of the first Adelaide Mag, uh, sorry, Adelaide Mag, first Australian Mag um, Vapors, I think it was, in, in Sydney, late 80s, by Blaze. And I think his was a fair cross-section of who was actually out there doing stuff. And that's the way it should be. He didn't favour anyone or anything, as far as I understand. Hype Magazine came along later on that. That was certainly a little bit sort of... Um, Bit of bit of favouritism going on there and that. There are certainly some people that don't get along with other people and that. They're never featured in these sorts of things. And that's a damn shame because they did a lot of damage and that sort of stuff and they probably deserve to be featured. But because, you know, they piss certain people off or whatever and that, they're ostracised and they don't make the grade. You look at Subway Art, the same thing goes on there. There are plenty of writers that were writing in New York at the time and that, that don't make the cut. And because they couldn't be bothered hanging out with Henry Chalfont or they didn't like him or whatever, you know, or other guys that were there sort of manipulating the situation and that didn't like him or whatever, you know, so. But it's not, it's not always a fair sort of indication. And then later on, of course, with the advent of easier access to media and anybody can make a magazine these days, anyone can make a book, anyone can throw a DVD together, you know. This is evidenced by how many are out there. Is that the real story? Is that the truth, so to speak? It's certainly not impartial or anything, is it? It's, uh, you know, we missed out back in the day and that, so here it is. We're going to, you know, we're going to put our two cents in, you know, and we want to be heard, you know. Does that make their artwork any better, any worse? I don't know. Art's in the eye of the beholder. Mm. The, the, the last thing. Oh, yeah.